Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. Uh, sorry if this video seems a bit rushed. Uh, it is early morning. I just woke up and I'm going to try to cram everything possible into this. So uh, I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my progress. So we are currently I have about two hours on my character, uh, three days and 17 hours into the league. Uh, we have made some slight adjustments. So on League Star, on the POB I released to you guys, you'll notice there was a replica soul tether there. Uh, sadly, I would avoid using Replica Soul Tether. Uh, basically, what happened was, is in recent times, I'd say like the past two leagues, Replica Soul Tether's prices went up massively. But before in the past, when it used to be around like an Exalt, or it would immediately drop after a few days to like 20 to 40 Chaos, I found it to be very good. Now, sadly, uh, since it's sitting at like 7 to 10 Exalts, I would completely avoid it, just because in this current league, specifically, monster damage is just on an ult like ultimate extreme high so i would actually recommend an agus aurora variant um which i will have this pob linked for you guys in the comments also remember you can always import my profile to always snag my pob everything is public for you guys nothing is hidden of course so um we're going to talk just a little bit about what i've done with the tree then i'm going to go run a map then we'll talk more about the build so with the agus aurora variant there are a few things to modify number one this is not a Melding of the Flesh variant because Melding of the Flesh will currently cut too much damage for me, slash, it is just a monster pain in the ass to gear up compared to a non-Melding of the Flesh. The reason being is Melding the Flesh will just completely shit on all of your resistances, uh, and I just cannot really do that right now, right? So one of the biggest things is I have basically redone this whole bottom side. And for those of you guys who are playing right now with Infernal Cry, you probably cannot imagine dropping Call to Arms, right? Uh, but thankfully, with Aegis Aurora, you can actually sit still for like 0.5 of a second, and you won't just die. Um, so this is kind of why this swap ends up coming in here. And the main reason for doing this is I need to get the points back. So to explain, you know, we were previously here, grabbed this, grabbed Call to Arms, came through, grabbed Soul of Steel, came down, grabbed our aura effect, grabbed our increased effect of auras. Now I have cut that off. I put points into one point in Divine Shield, Lancing Blows. I came across and grabbed Sanctuary. Then I put three points over here into Arcane Guarding. There's another setup where instead of doing what I have here, um, you can instead come up here, put a point here, and then take the Mastery. But this way you're spending one extra point to get 24% total res because you get six and six which is 12, and then 12 plus 12 is 24. And res is a big deal for me right now, especially with RF when you don't have good gear. It's hard to get, like, all of your life regen with all of your uh, res rolls as well. There is one other thing with the Aegis Aurora variant. Your overall life regeneration is going to be lower just because of gearing. Um, so that is one thing to take into account. So I have taken less damage taken from over time over here. Um, and then I have a Cluster Jewel setup. Now, big disclaimer... My cluster jewel setup is probably going to be expensive because people are going to see this video and copy it. This is not even the best cluster jewel setup at all. Uh, you'll notice here I have like corrosive elements. This is quite literally garbage because I have exposure on my gloves right now. Um, so an ideal cluster setup would be something with uh, probably prismatic heart or potentially even sadist. Now talking about your medium clusters, medium clusters I'd recommend the following. If you can get Flow of Life on a medium cluster, it's very solid. Because in my opinion, the Aegis Aurora variant lacks a bit of life regen. So Flow of Life really helps with that. Another one that's really good would be Wrapped in Flames. This you only need one of. It's not really mandatory by any means, but it does add really nice quality of life for being immune to chill. Now, one other thing to make note of, the reason we are able to drop this whole section down here on Aura Clusters is because uh, we drop Purity of Elements for Tempest Shield. Why? Well, Tempest Shield gives us Shock Immunity. Brian King Pantheon gives us Freeze Immune. Wrapped in, Fra uh, Wrapped in Flames gives us Chill Immune. And if you die to Ignite with a Righteous Fire build, you probably have more problems right now with your character you need to fix. So sadly, we are not immune to Brittle Sap and Scorch. But we're also rocking a solid uh, 75 block, 74 spell block. Uh, currently, my armor is a bit low at 27,000. Flasked up, we're at like 50k, so that's not too bad. I have also dropped my um, Sulfur Flask for a Basalt just to get more armor for our Aegis Aurora scaling. Uh, now, I do need to divine this. I went through like seven divines and kind of got a bit screwed, 
One other thing I added in is I bought a Brutal Restraint. These are pretty expensive. Uh, my Brutal Restraint is giving me a source of Onslaught um, on the Endurance Charge. So one of the next things is incorporating Endurance Charges into this build. That's either going to be through an Enduring Composure or the Searing Exarch Endurance Charge mod on Chest. With that being said, I still have two Fluff Gems. I have Culling Strike that's not needed. And I have Ellie Weakness for my Ashes that I don't have yet. Uh, so I'm going to go over my links and we're jumping into a map. Hex Touch, Flammability, Frost Blink, Swift Affliction, Fire Trap, Trap and Mine, Life Tap, Swift Affliction, Awaken, Ink AoE, Burn Damage, Righteous Fire, Elemental Focus, Life Tap, Infernal Cry, Molten Shell, Shield Charge, Life Tap, Faster Attacks, and Tempest Shield, Malevolence, Defiance, Banner, Determination. That's all we got. So we technically have like two open gems right now. I'm going to figure out exactly what to do with those. With that being said, I'm going to go jump right on into a... Tier 16 Guardian map. We got a uh, multi proj on here. Should be pretty fun. Uh, let's pump it up. Um, a lot of people like to uh, compare tooltip DPS to help them know where they are. So just for some numerics for you guys, remember I do have frenzy charges on, which is slightly increasing my damage. So we are currently rocking a tooltip. Oh, let me put on the little uh, sentinel. Here we go. We're max empowerment sentinel, so it's pretty fun. Uh, I am rocking a 468k RF. I guess that's with only one frenzy charge and a tooltip Fire trap of 800,000. Now I should be able to just tank him, but we'll see. Yeah, not a problem. Right, so to kind of elaborate and explain a little bit about how Aegis Aurora works, um, Aegis Aurora, which is also, Aegis Aurora is basically one of the best layers of defense you can possibly incorporate into a build in a mapping scenario. And the reason being is there's just so much random damage intake when you are mapping. Um, Aegis Aurora, when you're block cap, makes it so you replenish 2% of your energy shield whenever you block. Um, so when you're sitting at 50,000 armor, that's quite a bit of energy shield restored. Um, so right now, some of my goals would be boosting my max res up because my max res is pretty poor right now i'd like to be like 82 all res i'm not sure how i'm going to get that but that's kind of something that i'm working on right now uh, this is why a lot of people go melding of the flesh they basically scale like purity of ice get their cold res very high then go melding of the flesh and then by doing that uh, all of the resistances are 90 but that is just kind of a pain in the ass for me to set up right now it's probably something i'll convert to uh, it's just, like I said, a massive pain in the ass. I would drop a lot of damage for it. I'd probably have to anoint Charisma and then possibly use an Enlighten. So, you know, that's not really something I care to focus on right now. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much the damage now. I'm still pretty happy with it. 
The only problem is Aegis Aurora is climbing in price. It's going up now. It's actually at six exalt. Um, also didn't realize I recorded that on display capture. Sorry if the quality is a bit worse. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, Aegis Aurora is climbing sadly. Uh, so that is definitely sad to see. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got for now. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys have been enjoying the uh, stream highlights. Anyway, if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them down below or feel free to go to Global Channel 911 uh, where you can ask pretty much any questions you'd like. You can ask me on stream, but I've been really swamped with questions, so I'm pretty much just going to send most people to the RF Wiki. Anyway, I'm out. Take care. Thanks for watching. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. See you guys later.